Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So you may have seen that Fighter Dreadnought got a bunch of updates. Here we're going to cover how to play it. All of the abilities you should be using in single target and multi target. I'll put timestamps on the play bar below where you can skip to any section you're most interested in. First of all, we're going to talk about multi-target. Well, for Atwills, your best AoE ability is Reeve. 60 magnitude, range 45 feet, radius 6. When you have two enemies near each other, you can aim between them and you'll hit both of them with this ability. If there's only one or two left, just go to Heavy Slash if you're right next to them. But Reeve allows you to do some damage from afar. Heavy Slash will also increase your damage by 5% for 12 seconds, so good to get that buff. Now for your encounter powers, for multi-target, it's Shield Slam, Tremor, Onslaught, and then you do have the option of running Shield Throw plus Ricochet. If you just have a few enemies, don't be afraid to use Shield Throw instead of, let's say, Onslaught. It has a lower cooldown, but it will only hit four times. You can go have three targets, you can throw your shield throw at one of them and it'll hit basically all three of them and even the third guy twice because it's four hits. Also, if one of them dies while using the ricochet, unfortunately it stops. You can see if this guy's like low, we do shield throw on him and he dies from the hit, it doesn't ricochet to anybody else. That is unfortunate and that's the big drawback of ricochet. Only use shield throw plus ricochet when you have only a few enemies, like five of them in a quest zone. When you have big pools of enemies, you absolutely want onslaught instead. It just has a big area, 20 feet, and a higher damage with also that stun effect. It's just the cast time is a bit annoying and you have to have a target be next to somebody to cast it. Tremor is very nice and friendly there. You just stomp the ground wherever you are. And Shield Slam is that kind of area of effect where you need to target it. Make sure you're looking in the right direction. And you can hit quite a few enemies with that if you're looking properly. And you're combining it with Plow the Road to basically give it 600 magnitude damage. Also has a nice knockdown effect. So use a bit of crowd control so the enemies aren't going to... Uh, to basically get interrupted and they won't attack you as much. So that's your four abilities. Again, using Shield Throw when there's a few enemies and using Onslaught when there's lots of enemies. Moving to the daily powers, you want Earth Shaker. It's going to be your multi-target power. Now, you will want to have a Vengeance above 50% for this. You will want to anyway. We'll cover that in mechanics. But yeah. When you have multiple enemies here, you can go use your Earth Shaker near them. You stomp the ground, basically, and then you can follow up here with this ability. Just be aware it will drain like all of your vengeance by doing that, because this will actually consume 50 vengeance per target hit. This may very well get fixed, as you can see with the devs testing that out. Also with Executioner's Cut, we'll talk about that in a second. Moving to our mechanics, we have the new ability Forge Ahead. Whenever you press your left shift ability, you gain some immunity frames and a movement speed buff. You won't really notice it until you're moving. If you're moving in a direction, you have the movement key pressed, and then you go and press that shift ability, you can see you gain like a boost of movement in that direction. It's really nice. It's just you do have a three second cooldown on that. Then you have your Seath. You will use this to generate Vengeance, but the main reason you'll use your Seath is for your Revengeance ability to basically deal a 500 magnitude damage in a cone before you. You will also use it to animation cancel heavy slash. Not as prevalent in multi-target. We'll talk about more of that in single target. But again, it will drain stamina while you're doing this and it will also block up to 50% of your maximum hit points and it will generate that vengeance. So it's the easiest way to get that up when there's nobody around you or nothing. So if you're in between enemies, you have a bit of wait time, make sure you're going into combat with this full. But we can crutch this ability when we're just killing groups of enemies. This will just set our vengeance above 50 and the reason we want that is for this. You gain a 20% damage boost when your vengeance is about 50%, which is just 50. So once it's above that cross swords, 
that, that mark there, you know you have that extra damage boost. Make sure you always have that as best you can. Additionally, you will have abilities which will consume vengeance like shield slam plus this ability to deal extra damage. Just be aware of that and you'll want to manage it. We'll talk about that a bit more in a second. But ultimately, yeah, your kit's pretty good. You do have this weird additional effect here with when you're blocking and you go to use these other at will attacks that you can gain vengeance back quicker. It's all right, but I haven't found it that useful. Most of the time, you're just going to block enemies attacks with your seeth and deal damage back to them with your revengeance. Just make sure you release your Seath just after they've hit you to deal that damage. Exactly like Retaliate on the tank path that you may have experienced before. With the class features, we use these too. However, always spiteful is not very useful when you're not going out of combat. It's only good when you're going in and out of combat. So if you're in a just a zone and you're jumping between enemy groups, you're going to be popping in and out of combat and this will trigger. So if we're not at a high vengeance value, it will give us that, which is nice, but there is a 12 second cooldown on it. If you don't need this and you're in a fight which lasts a very long time and you're not gonna make any use of it, then absolutely just use vigorous strikes for the 10% crit strike. As for the feats, it doesn't matter for multi tire on the first pair, the second pair, the ricochet if you wanna be using shield throw, otherwise you could use prepared slam here get the crowd control effect on that but it doesn't really matter third set of feats you want executioner's cut however it's actually not the biggest deal between the two but executioner's cut will be a little bit better and you probably will want to work around playing with it just be aware it won't stack and it will drain five vengeance per target hit they're going to look at fixing it so that it doesn't drain so much vengeance i'll showcase in the rotation section what powers you want to be using and when and how you can make use of this plus bloody reprise to manage that vengeance just fine the fourth set of feats is you want to take land waster that's the multi-target one basically allows you to use your daily power twice as long as you're above 50 vengeance but it will consume 50 vengeance per target hit so you'll again want to make use of bloody reprise to get that back like instantly and that's the fifth set of feet that i would recommend so let's jump to a bit of a demonstration and show you how that all works together so in most cases you'll start the fight with like shield throw here then you'll go with your tremor and then you'll go with your shield slam and everything's probably dead. The reason again you're going with your shield throw is so that the enemies have hit points and you're not like insta killing somebody with that. If you are then maybe don't slot that and just use onslaught instead. You'll just one shot everything with your encounters. So shield throw here, tremor and then shield slam anything that's left. Again. If you're using the onslaught version, then it doesn't really matter much on the rotation. You could just go in and deal damage. But you will want to make sure, like now we entered combat, our vengeance is set. We used an encounter power. We want to use another one for our bloody reprise. And then we're pretty much good here. We can get vengeance back there. If you have no vengeance left, you can just wait for one dude to hit you. And then basically trigger your revengeance on him and kill him. And you should get vengeance, like a massive chunk of it, when you take some damage. So again, here, going to the fight, we can use our tremor. There's only one dude there. Shield throw or onslaught on those guys. And then shield slam on these guys. And then we can proc revengeance on whoever wants to hit me. I guess these guys just stand there. Those are the worst adds possible. You need to get behind them and hit them here. <laughs> again, if your vengeance is not over 50... This feature should kick in and put it above 50 as soon as you enter combat, like here. And then we can use that tremor there, we can use the shield slam and onslaught on the last guy. And that's everything dead again. It's just a bit overkill here on these scenarios. But here we can look at something like Castle's Retreat, a little skirmish. We go in here, we can trigger our Revengeance, tremor, shield slam to knock them down, shield throw. Things don't die as quickly, you don't have to worry so much about the shield throw, not getting value from it. But as soon as everything's low, then you know shield throw is probably just going to kill the guy. And you just got to move on to the next group. Again, you want to make sure you have your vengeance. This time we had it from before. 
Using the shield throw, it drained a bunch of vengeance to proc executioners on them. But then the next encounter after gave us a bunch. Here we used our daily. All of our vengeance got drained. And then we used the shield throw there. And we got it all back with bloody reprise. And it's pretty much just like that. You're managing your vengeance through bloody reprise. And then also seeth plus revengeance. Because you want to trigger that. You can go into Seath, as soon as a guy hits you, you're going to get massive amounts of vengeance and you can trigger this to deal damage against them. But let's move on to what you want to use for single target damage. You'll generally use a setup to something like this. There is again two variants, like using Commanders or Griffin's Wrath, whichever is your preference and whether or not you have somebody in the group already going to be applying this debuff. Another fighter or a rogue. Those vulnerability to physical damage effects don't stack. So in terms of the at wills, your main one is heavy slash. You're going to use reeve only when you have to keep a distance because of mechanics and to get a little bit of damage along with some action point regen. Heavy slash you will also want to learn to animation cancel it with C. That will allow you to get a bit more hits off per second. You can see this is the normal rate and then this is animation cancelling. So you can speed it up a good bit more. That is again with Seath. For the encounter powers, Bull Charge, Anvil, Commander Strike, and then there is the option to run Griffin's Wrath instead of Commanders, or to run Knee Breaker instead of Anvil, depending on what feat you choose here. However, Trip Attack is currently bugged and that's only 130 magnitude, so don't use that combo just yet. Stick with Weight of Vengeance, plus Anvil of Doom, and it is generally be more damage also because Anvil of Doom has then a lower cooldown than Knee Breaker when you consider the four seconds less. In terms of Commanders versus Griffin's Wrath, I generally prefer Commanders because it's a quicker cast. You get the damage of the power done. Griffin's Wrath takes forever, and in the time you're casting Griffin's Wrath, you could be doing a whole bunch more heavy slashes. And additionally, Commanders is going to increase all the damage you output for that 10 seconds. Moving to the daily powers, you want to use Mow Down combined with this feat most of the time. That's going to end up being a 2500 magnitude daily power, which is pretty huge. It's a bit of a combo, cast time's a bit annoying as well but you can cancel it and you're pretty much good. Moving on to the mechanics, it's like the multi-target section. You're using Forge Ahead just for movement, basically, to get out of a bad spot. Just be aware of the three second cooldown on it, and it does take a bit of your stamina. Your Seath, again, you wanna be using this to make sure you have your Vengeance over that 50 all the time, because you want that 20% damage boost, but also to trigger a Vengeance depending on the mechanics of the fight. In single target, it'll be a lot harder because the boss generally won't be focusing you because you'll have a tank in the group. Going to the class features, vigorous strikes for the 10% crit strike and momentum for the bull charge damage buff plus 400 magnitude. And you also gain a bit of a movement speed buff after you've been running for two seconds, which is really nice. You can use that on a multi-target loadout too if you just want to get around the place a bit faster. For the feats, you want to have that weight to vengeance for your anvil. Third set of feats, you want to have either or. Crushing blows is good in single target for sustained damage. When you can have a lot of time on your target, crushing blows can generally be worth it. Again, make sure you have over that 50 vengeance and then you're going to use that. You will drain some vengeance when it does trigger, so just be aware of that, but you should be fine as long as you have the last feat here. But, but, you can use your Executioner's Cut. You just need to be aware that it's not going to stack again. So if you use all of your encounter powers within like two seconds, then you basically will only trigger it once versus crushing blows being able to trigger maybe a few more times. To be honest, I've tested both of them and they average out to be about the same amount of damage. So don't be afraid to use either or. I would say Executioner's Cut is a bit more reliable damage and you might want to switch to that. Then you have Striker's Mark just to increase the damage of Mow Down. And then you have a Roiling Hatred just to sustain your vengeance 
you wouldn't have any trouble with that. Now for your rotation in terms of how you want to use the abilities together, well, first of all, make sure you have your vengeance over 50. That's important. Try to get it to full before you enter combat. Then you're going to go commanders, bull charge, anvil, and then try and trigger your revengeance. Then you're going your heavy slashes until you can get your next encounter power off cooldown. Then you use the encounter power. And that's pretty much it. Here we can wait for commanders, then use anvil, and then keep at willing. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty dead simple. But when you go to an artifact call, it can be a little bit more complicated. You want to make use of your tactician's bonus here to get the cooldown. You can have like two of them as well. Basically, again, make sure you have your vengeance full, then you're going to go with an artifact call. So you're going to use your artifact. Maybe a few Atwells, Commanders, Bull Charge, Anvil, Daily Power, or Mount Power and Daily Power. Then you get like your Vengeance again and use your Encounter Powers. And that's, yeah, pretty much it. That's your burst. It will depend on how many Tacticians you have. It's not that impactful if you just have one. You want to have two or three ideally. That way you can try and squeeze out those encounter powers a second time during the artifact call. Otherwise, fighter's pretty simple. Just make sure your vengeance is above 50% all the time. You gain that extra damage. And yeah, make sure to make use of the new ability, revengeance, when you can. It's not that much damage in single target, but it's a little bit. But not worth staying like squatted forever waiting for that opportune moment just learn when you could use it and when it's pointless trying to go for it that is ultimately it for fighter dps and how to play it after the changes if you have any of your own opinions on how you think it should be played differently feel free to let me know the ultimate thing to learn is animation cancelling heavy slash and you can of course animation cancel a bunch of your other abilities too squeezing out fractions of a second here or there and then it's just learning the timing and mechanics of certain fights so you can make the most of being melee because you have to be up close to your enemies you want to know when you can take advantage of your revengeance and when it's pointless and just focus on heavy slashing instead you've got the heavy burst damage because of basically having all those massive hitting abilities but then you just have an at will which is going to hit and you don't have much fluff to be honest you just have your vengeance meter you have a bunch of synergies with that and that's about it no damage over time abilities, no like buffs to maintain all the time by using certain abilities in certain rotations, except commanders, which yeah, you just have that up and then use your other abilities and you're good to go. Outside of that artifact call, generally just use them when they're off cooldown so that you aren't wa wasting them. Hopefully this helps some of you out there who are looking at gearing up and kidding out your fighter with these new changes. It does pretty well, to be honest. You can look for perhaps a future video where I compare them versus other classes. Special thank you again to all of these channel members for their added support, and we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.